is unbelievable. You can't do this stuff. Oxford, Mississippi, one of the great scenes for a college football game in the country. The activity begins at sundown on Friday when fans rush for their spots in the Grove, one of the better tailgating facilities you will ever find. By Saturday, it's a small village, and it's just outside of Bought Hemingway Stadium. The Ole Miss Rebels walk down the Walk of Champions to get inside the facility. Today is senior day, 27 in all for Ole Miss. The loudest applause given to Dexter McCluster. Met by his parents and his daughter, Dacula. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. This afternoon, an SEC West encounter, the Tigers of LSU against the Rebels of Ole Miss. A moment ago, first on the field, the Tigers of LSU. And behind them, led by their coach, Houston Nutt, the Rebels of Ole Miss. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. LSU has lost only twice this year, Florida and Alabama. No shame in that. Les Miles says, we have a goal for the season. We want to finish in the top five. To accomplish that, they must win out. No dot spurred on by memories of last year's late season collapse. The low light of which was a thorough thumping at the hands of Ole Miss. The Rebels, you might remember, won their last six a year ago. Preseason expectations were off the chart. They lost at South Carolina. Poof. Houston Nutt told us yesterday the negativity around this place was horrible. They clawed back. They defeated Tennessee last week. This is a battle for a better bowl berth. And LSU and Ole Miss fairly evenly matched. Gary, let's talk a little bit about seniors, particularly for LSU. Well, I think you're right on, Vern. I mean, these are guys that have been through a lot. A national championship and the way they finished last year, you have to look for your seniors, and usually that comes from those tough guys in the offensive line. Charles Alexander, a six-year player for LSU, and Saran Black, he started every game in his career offensive tackle. They will provide the leadership, but in this league, you need a quarterback to come through. And Jordan Jefferson, coming off that ankle injury, has had pretty good stats. But in the big games, those two losses that you talked about, Alabama and Florida, he did not come through. He must come through for them today to beat this old hot old Miss team. Well, talking about uh, expectations for a quarterback, Jevin Sneed was mentioned early in the Heisman conversation. He got a horrible start. He's kind of even the keel. Yeah, he, he finished off last season great, and everybody thought he would take off from there. But he lost a great offensive tackle, and he struggled. But you know what? Houston Nutt found help for Jevin Steen, and he found it in a little guy that produces big plays. Dexter McCluster, you can hand him the football, you can pass him the football, or you can snap it to him in the Wildcat. He makes plays, and you know what he's also made? He's made Jevin Sneed a better quarterback. And for more on Dexter McCusker, let's go down to Tracy. Well, thanks for McCluster, one of 27 seniors playing in his last home game today. I had a chance to catch up with the star running back as he made his final walk through the Grove. It's a great feeling right now. Knowing this is my last time, you know, walking through here, I'm going to enjoy every handshake and live it up. What will you remember most about your days as a Rebel? Walking through the Grove, man. This, this is it right here. All the fans showing so much love. This is it. Where does last week's performance rank for you? Number one, but I hope they replace that with this one. How about to go out on top with a win over LSU? What would that mean to you and your fellow seniors? It would mean a lot. You know, we went through a lot here at Ole Miss, but it would mean a lot to this program if we take this game. Good luck today. Thanks a lot. Thank all right. Thank you, Tracy. This game and all SEC college football games brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition.
Slight overcast, but uh, the sun trying to break through right now. Very comfortable. 61 degrees. Forecast for rain much later in the evening. So we should get through this uh, relatively dry. 98th all-time meeting. LSU leads the series, and Ole Miss snapped a six-game series losing streak a year ago. LSU has not uh, had trouble until last year with this team. Josh Jasper will kick off. LSU won the toss, deferred the option to the second half. And so Jesse Grandy, a freshman, number 10, with two kickoff returns for touchdowns this year. 5'7", 147 pounds. And it will be returned a yard in. Out to the 20-yard line. Tackle made by Ryan Baker. And the Rebels with Junior Jevin Sneed. See the lines three and four. The the interceptions, Gary, have been a problem. Well, he he is a rare talent, though. I mean, physically, he has everything you need in a high-level quarterback and even a quarterback that can play at the next level. He also needs some help around him. We saw that in the first half of the season. Markeith Summers is on the field, and he and Shea Hodge go wide right. Now, this is Summers in motion. Quick flip to McCluster. That's a lateral. That's a lateral, yes. yes. Yep. And now the uh, starting lineups offensively for Ole Miss, presented by Chick-fil-A. Bradley Sowell at left tackle, Neely, Geralds, John Jerry, the senior, and a true freshman, Bobby Massey. Hodge is one of the wideouts, but Cluster now the running back with Bolden in the backfield as well. Harris, the tight end, and Bro is a wide receiver. Second down. And a backward pass. So it uh, out of bounds. Here's the handoff. This is McCluster coming left. Watch out. Foot race. Danny McCray has an angle on him and knocks him out of bounds at the 29-yard line. But what a start for Dexter McCluster and the Rebels of all Miss. 50 yards. I'll tell you, Raheem Alem got blocked by a wide receiver that time, the defensive end, and that blew up containment. Watch Alem get blocked by the wide receiver coming in motion on the play. I think it was Summers, and that sprung it. Yes, it was. Was it Summers that got him burned? Yes. yes. And that, boy, that is a total breakdown in the defense when you get outside your contained man with a wide receiver. Here's the handoff up the middle to Bolden, a fumble. No, nope. he just broke loose. The ball was spotted at the 31. That was a 57-yard run. And the tackle here by Kelvin Shepard, number 11. Another look at the McCluster run. Can you imagine if you're an LSU defense, you have heard about Dexter McCluster for seven days, basically. And the first time he touches the ball on second and long, he gashes your proud defense. Look at the uh, rushing yards per game in the last three. And, of course, highlighted by last week's 282 against Tennessee. Here's Summers again in motion. Gets a block. Jevin Steed rolls out, drills it tip. Almost picked off. That was Patrick Peterson, number seven, who was developing into one of the standouts co corners in the country. Defensively for LSU. Up front, Alem, Woods, Alexander, and Pep Levingston. The linebackers, Coleman, Shepard, and Perry Riley. And the secondary, Hawkins, Taylor, Jones, and Peterson. Les Miles has now won 50 games as the head coach at LSU. Third down. Sneed shakes the tackle. Under some pressure from Levingston, gets around the corner, fumbles it out of bounds. Shepard with the hit. Wow. Jevin Sneed on the Well, carry. you can see why Jevin Sneed started out the year slow. Third and long in this conference, you get that type of pass protection early. It was Al Woods that put the pressure on that forced Jevin outside, and then... Levingston is the guy who pushes him, 
and catches it, I think, doesn't he? Uh, Shepard hit him. Yep, and then Levingston stands up and catches it. Oh, there you are. Now that's out of bounds. <laughs> Yes, that is out of bounds. <laughs> so Joshua Sheen is going to come on, the senior out of Oklahoma City, who's 9 of 11 this season, but missed one from 28. Great stop for the Tiger defense right yeah. there. I mean, that pass rush blew that play up. 45-yard effort to uh, become first on the board. That one cuts inside the right upright, and Ole Miss has a 3-0 lead. It was set up by a 57-yard run from number 22, Dexter McCluster. Ole Miss, 45-yard field goal by Sheen. They lead by three. Remember when Christmas trees weren't found in baseball? Beyond Columbus, Starkville, Tupelo. On the campus of Ole Miss, 60,000 plus on hand, and the Rebels scoring on the opening drive for the eighth time this year. That's uh, tops in the SEC. Andrew Ritter will kick off now for Ole Miss. McCluster with a 57 yard run to highlight that uh, field goal drive. Trendon Holiday is back. Ron Brooks is uh, just behind him, number 13. Now they split. Holiday comes near side. And the kick goes toward Ron Brooks through the end zone. It will come out to the 20. Jordan Jefferson. Injured ankle in the loss at Alabama. He also got a pretty good knock in the ribs in that game. So he sat out last week, told us earlier this week in a telephone conversation that it's not 100%. There's still some swelling, but he is going to give it a go. And Les Miles said we expect him to play the entire game. First down, 10. Jefferson in the spread. And Keelan Williams replaces Charles Scott at the tailback position. It's Williams on first down for a yard. Well, uh, Gary, go back to that uh, injury Jefferson suffered against Alabama. Right. First, it was a helmet to the chest. Almost, I asked uh, Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator, if he had a bruised chest. And he said no. It was the ankle that he missed. Gary said he was, knew he wasn't going to play last week, but he started watching tape on Ole Miss Thursday of the previous week. So he knew he'd be ready for this game. Second and nine. Play fake. Jefferson near side. And there's the advantage of having a 6'5 receiver as yes. Tolliver goes up and makes the catch. Terrence Tolliver. And the rest of the offense now for LSU. Up front, Black starting his 52nd straight game. DeRossi, Bear, hit, Barksdale, Tolliver, Williams in the backfield, Dixon having missed the last two is back at tight end, and Brandon LaFell is the other wide receiver. Double tight end set. Keelan Williams cuts through left guard. And appears to have enough to move the chain. Kentrell Lockett, number 40, made the tackle. Defensively for Ole Miss. It's Tillman, Poe, Scott, and Lockett up front. They lost Greg Hardy for the season. Trahan, Cornell, and Walker are the linebackers. And in the secondary, Marche Green, Brown, Lewis, and Vaughn. Russell Shepard is on the field. Number 10. First down and 10. Option play. Jefferson. Boy, were they ready for that. Trahan was there to lead the charge. Number seven. Defensive coordinator Tyrone Nix told us in the meetings yesterday that the number one play against LSU is the option. I was a little surprised by that because I, I feel that they're average. LSU is average at running the option. But Tyrone says statistically we have to stop that play. Shepard stays on the field after the loss of four. He is split wide to the right. It's an empty backfield on second 
and 14. Ole Miss showing a blitz. They are not blitzing. Good protection for Jefferson. Too high. Intercepted. Picked off on the far side. This is Cassius Vaughn. All the way in. Touchdown Ole Miss. There is a flag. It's at the nine-yard line. The ball was intended for Brandon LaFell, the slot overthrown by maybe five yards, too high. Matt Austin is the referee today. There to slot to LaFell right there. You see the ball overthrown two or three yards. That's what called the interception. The play after the interception, illegal block in the back, 85 on the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Diving into the end zone by the receiving team. Both headers will be enforced. First down. What? Well, they'll get it. That's, that'll okay, good. the block in the back, I understand. It was on the quarterback. And then I don't understand how you can make that call because you don't know for sure as a runner whether Barksdale can make the tackle or not. I don't think that's showboating. That's football getting into the end zone. See, Barksdale is chasing down. There was a block in the back. It would right. not have been a touchdown. Right. But see, Barksdale's right there. I mean, you got, you're allowed to do that. I'm sorry. Well, the touchdown is negated, and the... Uh Scrimmage play out to McCluster, bounces off a tackle. The line of scrimmage at the 34-yard line, and he's tackled at the 30. Yeah, that, that's a huge... The block in the black back right there was on the quarterback, Jordan Jefferson. Right. Eck push, there. yep. Yep. Jefferson was not going to make that tackle. Now, to me, that's a football play. He doesn't know for sure if he's going to get tackled. And, of course, that's a dead ball foul when he crosses the goal line. That means you march off both of them. Well, we made it five and a half minutes. Yep. Here's Vaughn, right side, caught. That will be a first down as McCluster lined up with a flanker makes the catch. Danny McCray. This was a zone defense by LSU. McCray's out in the flat and a very good read by Jevin Reed on that one to get the ball out. Now, that's protection. That time, you know, the LSU pass rush did not get the sneed. Had enough time to drop that ball off for the first down. First down and 10 from the 21. Here's McCluster caught by Raheem Alem slowed up just enough so that he is tackled in the backfield by Perry Riley, number 56. Raheem Alem, the victim of that early run, did a great job of getting upfield that time. That's his game. That quickness off the edge is where Raheem does a great job. Second down and 16 to go. Second and 16. Bolden was the tailback for much of the year, and then four games ago against Arkansas, Houston Nutt permanently moved McCluster into the tailback position. Play fake, Sneed into the flat. Oh, to missed, Bolden. Yep. Missed a big one there. That's one as an offensive coordinator, Ken Austin for Ole Miss. You dial that up expecting the blitz. You get the blitz exactly. LSU bus. No one covers the fullback. That's a 15-yard gain and most likely a first down. We were wondering here in the booth why Brandon Taylor is not uh, on the field. Danny McCray is, and we're told, Tracy Wolfson, that uh, she's being told it is a coaching decision. Third down. Here's Sneed back. Good protection. Deep left side for Hodge. Caught it. Touchdown. Shea Hodge up in the air over McCray. 
I thought this ball was going to be intercepted when he let it go. That's the arm strength. He threw it right into the rolled up coverage. Good protection again. Jerry does a nice job inside. Now the catch. Caught. Comes down. I think that's the proper call. Well, they are talking yeah. about it. The initial call was touchdown. Did he step out before he caught the ball? That's going to be the question. It will be incomplete if he stepped out before. You know, the official has his hat off down the sideline. But he would have had to have been forced out for it to be incomplete. Ruling on the field is the runner, correction, the receiver ran out of bounds on his own, was the first to touch the pass, therefore we have illegal touching. Right. That Penalty would be the call. Loss of down at the spot, at the previous spot, fourth down. If you're shoved out by the corner, you can come back in and catch it. If you run out on your own, you are not able to touch it first. There's the out of bounds. You could have said, now this is a really a fine line here, that his momentum from the shove put him out of bounds. But it's a hairline call. You saw the shove from the corner, Vern, you're right. A little bit of a momentum there, but he took two more steps, Hodge did. Now let's look at it from the overhead. Watch Hawkins shove him. He gets a shove. His momentum takes him out a little bit. I believe I'm correct here. If the official on the field ruled that he went out on his own, that is not reviewable upstairs. The only part that's reviewable is whether he stepped out of bounds or not. So they cannot review the fact whether his momentum took him out with a push. Once the hat goes down, the official on the field says he went out of bounds. And the official who made the call is Rob Skelton, the field judge. He was also the man who signaled touchdown. Here's Sheen. Blocked. It's blocked and heading toward LSU's direction. Picked up, and the foot race is on. It's Patrick Peterson. Touchdown, LSU. I think Al Woods, number 97, got it. Inside, right here, I think that's who got it. Al Woods goes up, left hand, yes. Then it bounces crazily right to the, one of the great players in college football. They're not going to catch. How about that, Vern? El Miss thinks they scored twice. Right. LSU scores once. LSU scores the one that counts. Another view of the blocked field goal. Middle of the defensive line. And I tell you, he didn't even really jump. You'd have to say that's a low kick. Look how smartly Kelvin Shepard went for the block. Yes. Shepard went for it right away and whacked it, and it went right to Peterson. What a wacky start. Typical, don't you think? We'll be right back. I love the brown bag special. You know, it's incredible. You can get all this food for only $7.99. I know. Oh, we should take these to the tailgate party. Oh, good call. Re yeah. Remember when we used to go tailgating I in sure college? Do. Man, yeah. you used to taunt the other team's fans. Yeah. Really, yes. really brutal stuff. What can I say? I tear them down and I don't build them up. <laughs> brown bag special. Sonic's got it, others don't. Drive in for a Sonic size deal. Two Sonic burgers, two tots, and two drinks, all for just $7.99. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. money you could be saving with Geico. A work of art, a finely tuned machine, a sanctuary, 
a command center. A sophisticated sedan, a sports car. Nissan Maxima, the ultimate dual threat. Now get 2,000 cash back or 0% APR financing when you purchase a 2009 Maxima. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. It slaps giving 2009 on How I Met Your Mother. Just tell me which one of you is going to slap me. I'm doing so much flinching. It's bad for my skin. A new How I Met Your Mother, Monday. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Well, you can see it again. This kick was not real high. Al Woods, number 97, right there. Doesn't really get off the line, but gets his paw up. The ball is whacked to the side and ends up with one of the great athletes in college football with it. Nobody's going to catch them. But can you imagine if you're Ole Miss, you intercept a pass, you think you score, you get two penalties, you think you score again, you're kicking a field goal, and all of a sudden it's 7-3 the other way. you got to have more than one paragraph yeah. to explain now that. Th this is where Houston Nutt really has to ri rally the troops. I mean, he's good at that, but he has to tell his guys, listen, it was a freak play. We just got to play football because you can lose a game real early if you start worrying about the officials. Patrick Peterson also had a 37-yard interception return for a touchdown. Josh Jasper will kick off, and Grandy is back to return it. This one very, very short. And Grandy at the 14-yard line has a block near side, but then he is cut down at the 30-yard line by Ace Foyle. Number 52. All right, we're going to take you back and show you those two calls. Remember, there already is one penalty, so this doesn't mean a lot. Even though it's another 10-yard penalty on the play, it would not have been a touchdown. I think a player should be allowed to do that. But here's the shove by Hawkins. Did the momentum take the receiver out of bounds? I think it's a hairline call. Could have gone either way, but he definitely was on the white. And now trailing 7-3 after the Al Woods blocked field goal. Here is McCluster. Spins, picks up three to the 33. Next to the it's about the 34. Chancey number 87, was uh, there defensively for LSU. Let's remember also, going back to that last drive, that Jevin Steed also made a very poor throw that could have been a first down that also produced the long field goal and the low trajectory on the kick. Pat Patterson is on the field at a wide receiver now for Ole Miss. Number 11. McCluster is the deep back in the eye. He gets it, comes left. Boy, he got a good block from John Jerry. Number 77, and then Kelvin Shepard makes the tackle. It's about the 36. On the tackle, number 24, Harry Coleman, and number 11, Kelvin Shepard. Third down. And three. Look at that. <laughs> and it's 7-3 LSU. Third and three. Big hole. This is Brandon Bolden, number 34. And he charges over right guard and gets the first down. Well, when you have McCluster in the backfield, you have to honor him. The defensive end's going to come outside because McCluster's going to come around the arc, and that's that read play. Basically, you're running that. It's a veer play from shotgun. Everybody's running it, but when you got number 22 creating space, you can run the ball inside. Now, Bolden is the only running back. Lionel Bro starts in motion. Sneed rolling right. Pulls up by, oh, wide open. How about that? Down the sidelines, Markeith Summers, number 16, out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Remember the last time Jevin Sneed came out and threw that curl pass and it was knocked down? Kent Austin said, I saw that. They're very aggressive. I'm going to go back to it. And they did it on number seven, Patrick Peterson. He had deep third. He was coming up to make the play. That is a great great play call that was designed to take the aggressiveness of number seven and work it against him now well, Jevin Sneed who uh, participated in the Manning Academy has now equaled Eli Manning's record of 2,000 yards and 
back-to-back -back seasons. Here's McCluster going right and not for much as Jacob Cotrera, number 54, is there to make the stop. Manning family represented here today by Archie and Olivia. 5.16 to go, first quarter, 7-3 on a blocked field goal returned for a touchdown by Patrick Peterson. Now we've got a little conversation going on at the 15-yard line near side. Just tells you what a, shows you what a great play call. Can one play, Peterson knocks down a pass. You put it in your brain, you remember it, you bring it out of the vault, and you say, we're going to go curl and go behind him. Peterson loves to knock him down and burn him. is malfunctioning. It will be kept on the field. All right, problems with the play clock. Time kept by the back judge. And on second down and 10, it'll be a double tight end set now. From the 15-yard line, Jesse Grandy, number 10, is in at wide receiver. I got to say, Jevin Sneed is kicking himself right now because he missed the fullback. And then he missed, even though he completed that pass, a good pass there, Vern, is a touchdown. Right. He was 15 yards behind the defense. Yes. Threw a knuckleball. And Sneed is split wide to the left. So here's the Wildcat. It's McCluster comes left. Started as the Wildcat. Now it's uh, Houston Nuts says now it's a Wild Rebel here. One thing about McCluster... Uh, he's not perceived to be a passing threat. No, he's 0 for 5. 0 for 5 last year. You know, when this whole thing started, Gary, you remember McFadden at Arkansas could throw it yeah, so well. Because he could run it so well. But, you yeah. know, I don't feel, and I'll continue to say this, that the wild cat or rebel, whatever you want to call it, is that big of a threat with a quarterback in the game. Remember, you talk to the defensive quarters, they say the tough part is it's 11 on 11. With a quarterback, it's 10 on 11. Yeah. Now McCluster split wide right here. Sneed back. Goes into the flat right side. McCluster. And he's tackled as he gets to the eight-yard line by Kelvin Shepard, number 11. Well, you find him all over the field, and that's the value. Remember, McCluster, to start out this season, was thought to be the answer to replace Mike Wallace. They were going to put him in there and play wide receiver. It just didn't work. Not because he can't do it, but because they need more home run ability at the running back spot. Josh Sheen's second attempt today. This one from 26 yards out. Up and good. So despite dominating here in the first quarter, the Rebels of Ole Miss find themselves trailing by one. Ole Miss trails by one. They will look back on this first quarter as a quarter of missed opportunities. Here's the interception all the way into the end zone. Vaughn dives. There was a block in the back. So two penalties negate that touchdown. Shea Hodge was ruled to have stepped out of bounds negating that touchdown. And then the block field goal Al Woods and picked up by well, Patrick Peterson. 17 plays for Ole Miss, five plays for LSU, and the fifth of those five plays was a poor throw by your quarterback. Right now, LSU needs a couple first downs, both for their offense and to rest their defense already in this game. Look at that. 122 total yards for Ole Miss, nine for LSU. Andrew Ritter will kick off, number 96. Got a fine leg. He uh, has 10 touchbacks on 58 kickoffs this year. This will not be one of them. Taken by Ron Brooks. Tries to get around the edge. And he is tackled from behind by Kendrick Lewis. A 41-yard return for the Tigers. How important was that, though, that it wasn't kicked to Trendon Holiday? Because Brooks makes a nice run here. 
and great field position, but they don't catch Trendon Holiday with that angle. Now Kendrick Lewis from behind. That was a 41-yard return. Now Russell Shepard is on the field, number 10, split wide. And Jefferson has an empty backfield. This is Shepard now going in motion. Jefferson underneath, knocked down in the line. Marcus Tillman, number 92. LSU fakes a screen to the wide side of the field to Shepard and want to come to the wide receiver screen the other way. And good defense, even though Barksdale had his man. Tillman read that play pretty easily. One of the 27 seniors introduced. That includes a, a large number of walk-ons who were honored before this game began. Second down and 10. Keelan Williams, large gap right side. And a first down LSU at the 40-yard line, a gain of 13. Kendrick Lewis, number one, and Keelan Williams go, oh, who's, uh, this is Brandon LaFell who's down. Well, this is just nothing more than an isolation play from shotgun. Take on the linebacker and get to the secondary. I think he got just caught up in the trash from behind on the play there. Yeah, LaFell is up and uh, walking toward the bench unassisted. LaFell's downfield blocking and then gets uh, the trash from behind that falls on his leg. Of course, Keelan Williams getting the start. Here's LaFell as he walks off. Appears he's going to be okay. Charles Scott made the trip with the team. Scott, the starter, broken collarbone, suffered on a 34-yard gain against Alabama. Second down, first down and 10. Williams, Trahan made the initial contact, and he's grabbed down at the 37. Well, that Charles Scott, you just about tell the minute he hit the ground that uh, this one was going to be serious. Yep. Broken collarbone out for the year. You know, he felt the two Alabama players coming from behind. He went to protect the football with both hands, and then as he fell, as you look at Charles right there, he fell right on his shoulder and popped that collarbone. Well, we've gotten to know him a little bit over the last three years, and great fun to spend a half hour or so in Fridays when we're in Baton Rouge with him. There's all kinds of motion in the line. Jarrell Poe is the guy who took out T-Bob Hebert on that one. Dead ball, offside, 57 defense, five-yard penalty, still second down. He's right on the ball, so it must have been a hard count. It was a hard count from Jordan Jefferson. See that right there? You can see his head bob just a little bit. The ball is now Only 48 the penalties line. through the first 10 games of the year. Second, down and two. Second and two. LaFell back. Shepard. Nice cut. First down. At the 26-yard line, the tackle from Johnny Brown. Let's go back to the studio with this John Hancock update. Here's Tim. Vern Clemson took the field assured of being the ACC Atlantic champs after BC's loss earlier today. And here's C.J. Spiller from four yards out. The Heisman candidate gives the Tigers a 14-7 lead. They haven't won an ACC title since 91. They'll get their shot this year. Vern, back to you. All right, see their all-time record against Virginia. First down and 10. LaFell among those in the backfield. Here's Jefferson back. Good protection. He finds LaFell, another LSU first down. This one at the 13-yard line. Well, this is an option right here. You read the middle linebacker on this play, and you go away from him. Jefferson reads right, left, excuse me, and then goes right, and LaFell runs an option route inside off of the linebacker, Allen Walker. That's a great matchup for this LSU team. Well, that's the 39th consecutive game in which LaFell has a reception. And between he and Terrence Tolliver, they lead the SEC in tandem receptions, 85 coming in between the two starters. Shepard at quarterback. Bounces to the right. And not very far. 
Cassius Vaughn, number 24, knocks him out of bounds. It'll be second down. The question is, does LSU and their wild rebel have faith in letting Russell Shepard throw the football? He's not thrown a pass. He was the USA Today Player of the Year as a quarterback. Yep. And he hasn't had a chance to throw one yet. You meant to say Wild Tiger, right? I mean, well, no, I call them all the Wildcat. They, they can sort it out themselves. Oh, right. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Here's Jefferson with pressure, avoids that, and is out of bounds, forced there by Marcus Tillman. The great read by Kendrick Lewis that time, leading tackler in the secondary, the senior, came up and got in Jordan Jefferson's face and forced the fake pass. Watch Lewis. That really blew the play up. It allowed Ole Miss to find their receivers and take away any possibility of a throw. Third and 14. LSU with a one-point lead at 7-6. Jefferson in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Ruben Randall, the freshman. A 17-yard touchdown. Well, Cassius Vaughn got LSU and Jordan Jefferson, and Jordan Jefferson, staring down a pass rush, got Cassius Vaughn. Double move to the outside, and he got him. And I'll tell you, this was a great play by Jefferson because he took one right as he let the ball go. Really high expectations for Randall at the beginning of the season. But that is only his eighth catch of the year and his first touchdown in a Tiger uniform. Watch the nice move by Reuben Randall here to the outside. It looks like there's safety help, but it's a blitz and the safety vacates. Watch this. Five man up, safety to the middle of the field, double move to the outside and a wonderful throw. Now Jordan Jefferson wasn't just standing there. This was a good pass rush. Tillman comes inside and just as he lets it go, and remember, he took that helmet in the chest against Alabama, and he stood in there and threw that football. Great play by the quarterback. Promising start for Dexter McCluster this afternoon. Already 65 yards, rushing 18 yards receiving but his team the rebels of Ole Miss trailed by 8 14 to 6 as we began the second quarter Ole Miss with a second down and six, down and six. at the 43 McCluster in the backfield he's the deep back in the eye he gets the handoff and straight up the middle that's good for a first down for Ole Miss at the 11. Well, we began the afternoon talking about what's at stake here, a better bowl bid, really, for one of these two teams and more. I think more, yes. Okay. You know, there were such high hopes. These these two places, you know, Ole Miss thought they had a top-five team this year, a run at Atlanta and getting the championship. And LSU, they always think they have the team. They do have a great team. I think it's pride. It's finishing off the right. season, you know, and I – that's why this game right now, it's been the little things. Little details have really caught up with Ole Miss. A pass too long, an underthrow here. Here's a uh, flip. Brandon Bolden has it out of the left side. You know, just small things against a good football team like LSU. You miss a pass, it becomes a 50-yard field goal. There's a fullback in the flat. Complete that. It might be a first down. Then this is a touchdown by Jevin, but he underthrows it. The receiver has to stop, and the momentum is not there. And Patrick Peterson comes and stops the play. Second down now at the 44 yard line. Marquis Summers starts in motion. Play fake, Sneed into the flat. It's caught by Bolden, and he's got another first down, it would appear, at the 39 yard line. Jai Eugene. Makes the tackle, number four. And here's what I'm talking about. When you've got Dexter McCluster cluster who runs the ball, and on that one, by the way, did you see him block? Yes. Took out the outside guy after the fake. 
when he runs the ball like this, you can get those fullbacks in the flat and make those easy throws for Jevin Sneed. First down, Tim. McCluster in the backfield with Andy Hartman, number 43. McCluster, look at him spin. Number 22. Enjoyed chatting with him yesterday. He, after that enormous game he had against Tennessee, he said he walked into breakfast Monday morning and somebody started clapping and he didn't know how to react. And then soon everybody in the dining hall began to clap and gave him a standing ovation. So if you'd never met a guy, there's a guy who got a standing ovation for eating <laughs> eggs. Well, that's right. Or averaging 197 yards in the SEC the last three games. One of the two. Yeah. I mean, right. and I think he can do it at the next level, by the way. On second down, this is Bolden. Well, uh, how about some more on Dexter McCluster? Here's Tracy Wolf. Well, guys, McCluster said he always considered himself a running back. He told us he grew up modeling himself after Barry Sanders watches highlights of him every Thursday before the game. He's a role model around campus and in the community. Just yesterday, he spent some time at a local elementary school talking and reading with kids. And football isn't his only passion. He loves singing, R&B, and gospel. He's pretty good, guys. I love you so strong, you were there for me, and I know, just from looking in your pretty eyes, that you're my butterfly. He's a lot better than I could be. But I, but I think his future's in the NFL. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he does not remind me of Barry Sanders. No. He, he reminds me of Warwick Dunn. And I think he's got a great career as a running back out of the backfield, third down specialist, but also carrying the ball. You know, everybody told us that Sean Jackson was too small to play in the NFL. He's playing in the NFL. Split backs now. And here's the handoff. Right side. Bolden at the 30 on first down. And uh, Charles Alexander and Al Woods, the two senior anchors of this defensive line for LSU, make the stop. He by number 54, now Woods, who had the block field goal that led to a touchdown earlier. I think Kent Austin will put this in the bank also. When McCluster comes out here on the handoff inside, there is no containment. Later, that will come back and be one of those bubble screens to the outside. Loss of one last play, second down and 11. Right side. Oh, boy, almost picked off. Instead, Marquise Summers has the ball. And a first down Ole Miss at the 17. Patrick Peterson defending. Yeah, and this is where Jevin Sneed shows why a lot of people believe he is a first-round draft pick. Because that was a rifle shot. Because anything less would have been picked off by one of the great players, Patrick Peterson. He just drilled that pass out there. Marquis Summers breaks and goes wide to the left now on first and ten. So again, Ole Miss driving on LSU. The cluster with Hartman leading the way. Gets around the corner. Gets by Riley. A little jump over a defender and he's out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Speed, speed, speed is one thing, but you also have to have blocking inside. Was it Hartman? Yes, it was. Andy Hartman, number 43, gets the arc block right to the outside. You outrun one guy, and then Jai Eugene has to take on the fullback, and McCluster makes a positive play. Second down at the 11. Second and five, and the 10th play of the drive. Look at this, McCluster, total yards, just under 100, and LSU with 57. Play fake Sneed into the flat, caught by Hartman. The fullback, he's going to be short of the first down at the eight-yard line. Jai Eugene, number four, makes the stop. Chad Jones helped. On the tackle, number four, Jai Eugene, and number 54. Jacob well, third and short, and I would not call this a physical offensive line for Ole Miss. It's not a typical Houston Nutt offensive line that he had when he was at Arkansas. This is more of a finesse offensive line, and look what they're going to do because of that. Yeah. Spread the field with McCluster alongside Sneed. Third and two. Start. 79 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. 
That's the freshman Bobby Massey who is getting his third start at right tackle. Actually, his second. He got the start against Tennessee. It's an unbalanced line. They move over Sowell over with them. They got two tackles on the same side there, and Massey jumps. The ball is now at the See Sowell come line. to the other side? Third that was an unbalanced look. Now it becomes third and seven. Three wide receivers right side, one to the left. Little flip out, one-on-one, -on -one, McCluster, he's in trouble. Harry Coleman, number 24. Don't, don't like the call. Got to be honest here. That's a good call on first or second down. But in a passing situation, that bubble screen with the fake is not going to fool this LSU defense. Here's the fake inside. Nobody even looks at it. The secondary is ready for a pass or a screen, and they just ate that play up. I don't think that was a good call from Ole Miss. Ole Miss has to settle for the field goal try for the third time. Joshua Sheen from 34 yards away. And it is good. The field goal is good from 34 yards out. The score is now the LSU Tigers. Well, they came back, got three instead of seven. It's 14-9 with eight minutes and 51 seconds to go. First half. And we all look forward to that. Saturday, December 5th in Atlanta, the Florida Gators and the Alabama Crimson Tide met for the title last year in a memorable encounter. Uh, we can all only hope that it uh, equals the anticipation this time around. Andrew Ritter will kick off that last drive. 12 plays, 45 yards, and Sheen with a field goal. Brooks and Holiday are perched back at the five. Holiday went the other way this time. Good read by Ole Miss. They kick it away from him again. Yeah. So it's Brooks. Oh, good block. Now he's in trouble, however, and reverses field. That is a long way to run to get to the 21-yard line. Compete against your friends in College Bowl Pick'em to become the ultimate champion. And for your chance at the $10,000 grand prize, it's free to play. Sign up now at cbsportscom slash fantasy. LSU, Jefferson at quarterback. 14-9, they lead, 8.38 to go. First half. See the difference in plays right there. Ole Miss moving the balls, 172 yards. First half already. Keelan Williams up the middle, spins, almost broke it for a huge game. You know, this is not unusual. We've seen them a number of times and charted them. Uh, so look at this, Gary. Yeah, especially shocking. No, you're you're looking for at least 60 to 65 plays if you're a ball control offense, and you can see in those two games, Florida and Alabama, that really hurt this football team. They do get a first down out of Keelan Williams. Here's Jefferson, pressure, and a quick flip to the tight end, Richard Dixon. Dixon out of the last two ball games, and now it's ruled incomplete. Dixon, number 18, in his senior season. Yeah, and he, he's been hurt and nicked all year. He doesn't look healthy watching him from up here. He was such a weapon a couple of years ago in this offense. Last couple of years with new quarterbacks, Jarrett Lee last year and this year being injured, he has not been the weapon we saw him as a sophomore. Second down and 10. Shepard split out wide to the right side. Now he's in motion. Jefferson back, looks deep, fires it. He's got a man. It is caught by Tolliver. Gain of 30. Well, they got Tolliver matched up on the safety that time, Kendrick Lewis. And this was great protection again inside. Watch Tolliver get on the safety. Lewis cannot match up with Tolliver and Jordan Jefferson with time. Hands that ball off, 35 yards downfield. Beautiful throw. 
And a first down 10, Kendrick Lewis in the bench area, still down. First down and 10. Jefferson, I think he has to call timeout. Yes. So the time called at the eight-minute mark. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC. We'll continue after this message and this word from your local station. Catch you up to date on the current BCS standings. Of course, Florida, Alabama, Texas. And then TCU, uh, undefeated, plays at Wyoming tonight, followed by Cincinnati and Boise State, both also undefeated. And uh, TCU, if things finish this way, is going to be into a BCS game. It's time now to segue, and here's the duck. Aflac. The Aflac what? trivia question. When is the last time a team from a non-BCS conference won the national title? Who was the last team from a non-BCS conference to win the national title. It's a bit of a trick question, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. Won't be good. Didn't we, would, we, would be de- we would be deceptive. Yeah, I think it was, there wasn't even a BCS conference then at the time. Gosh, right? and weren't we glad. <laughs> First down and 10. Nothing. Keelan Williams. Yeah, well, well, we'll, we'll get, it wasn't within the last 12 years. No, is, that, is that fair to say? Very fair. All right. You know, we're talking about those plays again for LSU and the need for plays. You know, we did that Florida game, that night game, Tebow coming off the concussion. LSU in that game only had eight possessions the whole game. You know, and that, no matter how good you are, you only get the ball eight times, it's going to show. And that's what they do doing today, these long drives again. They're not getting a lot of plays. They have a touchdown catch from Randall and a blocked field goal return for a touchdown. Here's Jefferson back. Lots of time, but then the pressure gets to him. He fires it out incomplete. Tolliver, the intended receiver. Now let's go back to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All right, Vern, Tim Tebow threw for a couple of touchdown passes, including this one to Riley Cooper. He became the SEC's all-time leader in touchdowns as they swamped Florida International. Mark Ingram for Alabama rushed 11 times for 102 yards. A couple of touchdowns as they blow out Chattanooga. And Vern... Have you heard that those two are on a collision course and that all my rowdy friends from the studio are coming along? (laughs) You know, there's not going to be a fly in the ointment for either of them between now and then, right? Alabama will finish up on CBS regular season at Auburn and will be in uh, Gainesville next week as Florida State visits. And the play clock, which is now operative again, by the way. You have to say... That it's a bust on the quarterback, but you also have to say it's a bust on Les Miles. You know, the coach can see that and call a timeout and save him if he, he wants to. We've seen that by coaches all the time. So everybody on that one was kind of lo- less real late. Did you see that Les yeah. real late did not get there? Or did he? Did oh, maybe he, get he there? did. Maybe he did. I, did he, I think he did. Les saw it late. Only on the field, the LSU head coach called timeout prior to the time of fire. So Les wasn't sleeping. No. <laughs> no, I saw the flag come out, but Les Miles real late sees it. Watch him. He's looking up there, and he goes and get. Boy, I'll tell you, that was hairline. A lot of hairline calls here lately. Yeah, but the hat won that one. <laughs> Before you ever love it, the Nissan Altima goes through over 5,000 tests. No wonder J.D. Power & Associates ranked it highest in initial quality. The new Nissan Altima. Quality you can love. Now's the time to get more choices. Now's the time to get more of the seafood you love. Now's the time to create your own seafood feast at Red Lobster. Choose two or three from ten selections. Classic favorites like steamed crab legs to new creations like wood-grilled shrimp with garlic cream and parmesan or tender salmon with a sweet maple and cherry glaze. Get more for your money when you create your own seafood feast for a limited time at Red Lobster. 
You've always had them. Dreams. At the Hartford, we've helped you seize them for over 200 years. Protecting what you have today. Preparing you for tomorrow. Visit thehartford.com to learn more. And with the Hartford behind you, achieve what's ahead of you. The Hartford. Insurance. Investments. Retirement. I am not a murderer. Dear God, please help me. Back at Ole Miss, and let's take a look at our Home Depot tools to victory. Well, to be as good as Dexter McCluster has, you have to have it all. His uniqueness is sometimes he can get lost. Now you see him, now you don't. The free safety has no idea where he is, and then he jukes. That's the second part of this scouting report. Misses a tackle, and there's the speed. Gets to the outside, and watch this, the last piece, the cutback. And you know what we can't show in this scouting report when you talk to the coaches? is his understanding of the game. Yeah. Kent Austin told us he's one of the smartest football players he's ever coached. And Kent was head coach in the Canadian Football League with professionals. He said, we can put him anywhere in the formation. We don't even have to rep him. He can get it conceptually. He does not have to take a lot of reps. Jasper will kick off for LSU. They've extended the lead 17-9. Grandy, one of two men deep. Onside kick. Who got it? It looked like LSU's Peterson might have got it. Uh-oh. This is going to be close. Ruled out of bounds. There's the kick. There's Peterson. I think that time he was out calling yep. the field was right. What is it about Patrick Peterson oh and was he in or was he out? I yes. think that's the great call right yep. there. Yeah. His left foot was dragging on the play, but I actually don't think he caught the ball till his right foot came down and controlled it. He was dragging his left foot exactly the way you teach a wide receiver. The kick going out of bounds be tacked on from the out of bounds spot. First out. How about the Mad Hatter? Yeah. Had his best player to the outside, saw something, and Peterson just a couple of inches from pulling that one off. Yeah, we refer to Peterson, of course, and did he or did he not get the interception at Alabama? Uh, he insists that he did. It looked like he did. Here's the pass complete, left side. Fumble. Yep. LSU's got it. Russell, Kelvin Shepard. And Chad Jones pulled it free. He sure did. Chad Jones, the hero of that Mississippi State game, making that play on the goal line stand. Great execution to the outside. Pitch and catch. Going to be a first down. And then Chad Jones gets his right hand and rips it out. Boy, that's perfect. Tackle. Picture perfect. Was his knee down, though? Was his knee down? Should be reviewed. If I was a replay official, I would take a look at this. Play is under review. Yep. Shea Hodge is the receiver. Was his left knee down before the ball came out? Replay official today is Bob Patrick. Well, you see his left knee down. And no loose football right there. I think this is going to be overturned. There's the knee down. Left knee. His hand was still on the ball, or was it starting to move? A little <laughs> closer the more you look at it, isn't it? Remember, ruling on the field was a fumble. I thought that first look we had... That ball could have been moving. I might second guess myself here. Nobody's done that in a while. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more time. That's why you got to watch it four times. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's, that's hairline, if you ask me. Well, and, and we're kind of back in the discussion we had about the Patrick yes. Peterson interception. The well, ruling on the field was fumble. Right. Is there enough to overturn it? That one, to me, was a little different because the guys on the field didn't have a great view of it. This one, the players were right there. Well, here we are. After review, video shows the receiver caught the ball. His knee was on the ground before the ball came. I'm thinking back, honestly, just because every game we do seems to have oh, something. You know why? These athletes are so great now. Right. And, and the equipment we have compared to five years ago, I mean, is just amazing. So all these close calls are going to be reviewed yeah. like this. Yeah. You know, that, that really was just right there. I thought his knee was close to down, but I also thought the ball was moving just an inch. But I thought he still had position, too. I could argue either way on that one. You're amphibious, in other words. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Across the middle, Shea Hodge breaks the tackle down inside the 10. 26-yard game. Boy, Jevin Sneed is putting on a show with some of his good throws. Forget a couple bad ones. This was a fake wide screen. Look at this throw. Perfect. Sneed is going to look to the right and then throw a strike inside. Pretty good route by yeah. Shea Hodge, too. Yeah, it was off that bubble screen look. Here's the wild rebel. And this is Bolden who can take that thing. There's not much of a threat to throw out of this, though, for Ole Miss. Yeah, Brandon Bolden, the Baton Rouge native in the Wildcat on that play. See Ole Miss with 22 plays inside LSU territory. Pat Patterson, number 11, is uh, top of the screen. Second down. Option, Sneed to the three-yard line. Kelvin Shepard with the tackle. That's really all you need from the quarterback on that option play. You don't have to be a superstar with it. You just have to keep the defense honest. Third and goal. And Sneed comes over and asks Matt Austin for a timeout. That is the first used by Ole Miss in the ballgame. And I hope all of you have noticed our little wrinkle here with the timeouts on top right there. We've got the timeouts that you can see right at the top of our bar. Nice to have that. Yep. <laughs> Shea Hodge, when we return, third and goal, Ole Miss. We're back. We're back. Let's take a look at those two uh, Jevin Sneed throws, Gary. Started out on first down, and then they call at the end of that play, and then the nice play off of the bubble screen, Jevin Sneed. Nine for 12 in the game. He's hit his last seven. You know, for Jevin, there's a stat that none of us like, but it's always true. You're a lot better with the lead than from behind, but he's had a good football game here playing from behind. Very accurate seven of his last seven. Third and goal from the three. Right side. Touchdown. Grandy. Jesse Grandy, the freshman who has specialized as a kickoff returner, gets the touchdown. It looks like Ole Miss is going to go for two also. Now, you know I wouldn't do it. No, I know you wouldn't. Nope. What's the argument to be made why you would, or is there Well, he wants to tie it up. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I you just, think it's too early? Well, I think it's your less than 50% chance, you know. That last play was speed on speed. McCluster to one spot, Gandy coming across. Hurry out of the huddle, quick snap, got it. Sneed rolls right, pulls up, goes in the end zone, 
knocked away incomplete. Well defensed by Ole Miss, excuse me, by LSU on that play. The touchdown play previous, speed on speed, speed here, speed quick motion, catches LSU flat-footed. Speed sweep off the quick motion, a walk-in. Got two speed guys in there, another great play call on third down and a touchdown. But the two-point play, LSU had it defended perfectly. Jeb and Steed had to try to throw across his body, but Perry Riley makes the play. Two-point game. Seventeen fifteen, LSU by two. And let's take another look at the touchdown run. I saw Chad Jones arguing after the play. Let's see if he gets held on the play. Gerald Harris, number 80, has him in the end zone. You can see him. I don't think he'd have got there. I don't think he would have got there, though. Might have been held. A hold's a hold. But Chad Jones, I don't think, would have got to the play. Brandy gets the touchdown. The try for two unsuccessful. And Ritter will kick off. Randy with a three-yard touchdown run. Ron Brooks again. Barrels out across the 25. They'll be spotted right at the 25. Alan Walker with the stop. Okay, here's the uh, answer. Which is the last team from a non-BCS conference to win the national title? Go back 25 years. Brigham Young, 1984. Lavelle Edwards, the coach. Robbie Bosco, the quarterback. They beat in the Holiday Bowl, wasn't it? A 6-5 and five team, I think. Michigan, that's right. Yeah, first down and 10. Jefferson rolling right. Oh. Tolliver. A first down and a 16-yard gain all the way out to the 41 as Rebels went for the interception. Johnny Brown. Well, Kendrick Lewis, I believe number one, was the guy that almost picked this thing off. Got there a half step late. And Tolliver makes a nice catch. They had a first down at the 41-yard line. Keelan Williams, again, Charles Scott. Broken collarbone out for the year. That happened two weeks ago. And here's a rare catch from Chris Mitchell, number 86. Only his seventh catch of the year. It is striking the difference in confidence that they have in Jordan Jefferson in this game than they did against Florida, the game they did that. I mean, they hit him the whole game. And it really hurt them. You know, they didn't score on any points. So you can see in this league, you got to use your quarterback. Just the way it is. Second down, two. Cut back. Williams spins. Another first down. Marcus Tillman, number 92. Well, the last... Uh, the last touchdown came to the end of a series of unusual plays, the first of which was this onside kick. Peterson tracked it down, tried to stay inbounds, ruled that his right foot was out of bounds. Then Shea Hodge, the ball ripped out by Chad Jones. That was ruled that the knee was down, and the official was overruled by the replay official. First down and ten. Jefferson at the 41. And you know, Vernon, it was almost, you could call it like a just miss old series. And then lastly, Chad Jones thinks he gets held and the official just missed that one too. So three just miss plays for LSU. Now remember early in the game, Ole Miss was just missing right. those plays. Right, right. 2.45 to go before the break. 
LSU by two. Hand off to Keelan Williams. He stopped. It'll be third down at the 39-yard line. Allen Walker, number nine, was there for I, the Rebels. I, excuse me, Vern. I saw Houston Nutt in the defensive huddle before his defense went out, out there, and I'm sure he was imploring them, we got to have a stop, guys. LSU gets the ball to start the second half. They're going to get two straight possessions here. We can't let them drive and score here. Third and six. You wonder if it's four down territory here. Blitz. Jefferson got him. Not now. No. <laughs> you know, you would hope, you know, LSU had their slot on cover. That ball could have been shot out to the slot and picked up five yards very easily. It was a zone blitz. Look, look, no one's on the slot right here. You just throw that ball out there. He could get five or six yards easily. Jordan Jefferson stays with it. It's a zone blitz look with, actually, with six guys coming. They dropped the nose tackle on the play. Emmanuel Stevens with the sack. And it's fourth down, LSU. 139 to go first half, a two-point LSU lead. Big sack by Emmanuel Stevens, and it forces the first punt of the game. Josh Jasper, there's Tyro Nix, defensive coordinator, Ole Miss. Yeah, he made a great call on third down there. Marcus Tillman, the nose tackle, dropped into the throwing lane. He rushed outside, confused Jordan. Jasper is the position punter for LSU, in addition to being the field goal kicker and this one nicely positioned inside the 20 and bounces out of bounds so he accomplishes his job out of bounds at the 18 well coming up at the end of the half the Geico halftime report Tim Brando whose family is here in attendance today and uh, look Archie who is often in the studio has been replaced by Tony Barnhart <laughs> Tony will love that I replaced Archie Gr exactly. Archie Manning Archie Griffin. I've got the Heisman on my mind. Well, coming up. <laughs> yeah. Well, what does uh, Houston let, let his offense do? Run McCluster out yeah. to the 21. Not a bad idea. Discretion. Good idea. Unless something pops here. Got a long way to go against a very skilled defense. Yep. I wouldn't want to gamble here on this part of the field. Might be able to hit a screen or pop a draw. Second down six. McCluster. Out to the 25. Jacob Contreras with the tackle. McCluster to the 25 yard line. On the tackle for LSU was number 54, Jacob Contreras. Well, these great athletes are forcing mistakes in this football game from both sides. I mean, that's what happens. you got so much speed, so much talent on the field that you just can't play perfect football games. Should be the final play. Remember, LSU can call a timeout right. to force a punt. Bowling spins. It settles that. Yeah, it does. That'll be a first down, and the clock stops with 20 seconds to go. Both teams do have one timeout remaining. Seventeen fifteen. final 10 seconds on Ravelin. Well, he's going to throw it. Marquis Summers, last play of the half. Kevin Saint pass completed number 16, Marquis Summers. It's the end of the first half of play. And the score, the LSU Tigers 17, the Ole Miss Rebels Speed throws it down, but this did not scare LSU at all. They backed up, let him have it. All that hurts was the stats. <laughs> Final play of the first half. This has been a first half filled with all kinds of unexpected turns. Let's go down to Trace. 
who's with Les Miles. Thanks so much, Coach. Your defense gave up 265 yards in that first half. How do you shore things up there? We just got to play a little more intensely. We got to understand, settle down. There's, there's a point where some of the plays that, that our opponent made were prepared to make those tackles. We're in position. We just need to settle down and make those tackles. You talk so much about finishing the season. What do they need to do in this second half to be able to do that? Same. They got to play with great intensity, take the second half over. And how about Jefferson? We saw him still a bit hobbled with that ankle. How do you like his performance in the first half? Well, I think he's playing with courage. You know, by any time a guy goes on the field a little nicked at quarterback, you have to. Now, he's not played as sharp as he's capable. You get him playing a little bit better in the second half. Thanks, Coach. All right, Tracy, thank you. And that is the end of the first half. 17-15 LSU. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Thanks, Vern. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Tony, and I will have all of today's action, including everything's coming up roses for Ohio State, while Michigan lands in the Big Ten cellar for the first time in nearly a half century. After this word from your local state. Welcome back to Vaught Hemingway, Oxford, Mississippi, as we get set for the start of the third quarter. 17-15 LSU. A moment ago, Tracy Wolfson with Houston Nuff. Coach, several missed opportunities early on in the game, but the team climbed back in it. What was the difference there? Well, all year long, especially the last five games, boy, they hung in there, hung in there. They know how to fight. we got to finish now. Was it a matter of nerves early in the game? I don't know. I don't, it shouldn't be. We're playing a lot of football. It shouldn't be. But, you know, it hurts a little bit when you get a couple of things called against you. But, uh, hey, you've got to overcome. This defense holding LSU to just 132 yards in that first half. What do you like from them so far? Well, I tell you, uh, they, they, they've carried us all year. They've done a good job. And uh, got to do a good job starting right now in the third quarter. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. High energy guy. Houston Nutt. Second season as the head coach at Ole Miss, having been at Arkansas for a decade prior to that. Ron Brooks, Trendon Holiday are deep to return the opening kickoff of the third quarter with Gary Danielson, Vern Lundquist, Tracy Wolfson, the SEC on CBS. And a 17-15 ball game. This time it will be Trendon Holiday. Has a long return of 50 yards this year. And this one will be good out to the 26-yard uh, line from which point LSU and uh, Mitch Joseph, it looks like the injured player. There's a player down for LSU. Well, while they tend to them, I just want to ask you your thoughts about the first half. You know what strikes me is that for a team like Ole Miss, to lose a couple key players, you know, they lost two first-round draft picks, and, and Michael Wallace, who's a third-round pick that could have been a first-round draft pick, they started off slow, but they've improved. They've, they mm -hmm. are now a better football team than they were, you know, the first four games of the year. You can see it. Their defense, as Houston told Tracy, has been solid all year, but that offense has found themselves. For all us, LSU is, Jordan Jefferson looks like he makes a lot of great plays, but really the big play is missing from this offense. They, they don't seem to hit the deep ball, and they just are they're making first downs here and here, but it's hard to drive the ball in this league. Back to the field. The injured player, Mitch Joseph, back up tight end. He's down at the uh, 17. He was in the middle of the wedge on the play. He's going to come in from the left side of the screen here. I think he's the middle guy. Oh, just takes one right in uh, the chops. He might just be dazed. He's right in the middle. See him there? Holding hands. And then he gets almost helmet on helmet there. So he is uh, able to walk off with that well, a little bit of assistance. Yeah, yeah, he got his bell rung on that one.
First down from the 25. Shepard, Russell Shepard on the field. Trahan coming on the blitz, and he slants to the right and got there to help with the tackle. Patrick Trahan, number seven. Well, let's take a look at uh, first half trends. Well, McCluster started out with that big 57-yard run, and you can see his value both as a receiver and running the ball. Jevin Sneed can't do much better than that. We critiqued a couple of his missed throws, but he had 10 completions. Jordan Jefferson again. You know, that's 6 for 10, okay, no big plays. And Patrick Peterson, the blocked field goal for the seven points. Second down and five. Corner rush, got him again. LaVon Scott, number 96, led the way through. Yeah, Kentrell Lockett also from the outside comes in there. Lockett lines up extremely wide and gets a full head of steam coming. He's very tough to take on. Watch Lockett right here also real wide coming in. Pressure up inside and lock it outside. That's a good pass rush. Rush right there. One wide and one up the middle. Third and 15. Ole Miss planning to rush only three, but there's a flag down. This could be a delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay nope. of game. Yep. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Now let me say, I think that's a good no call right there by Les Miles. I would not take a timeout on third and 17. You're not likely to take, make it, and I need those timeouts if I'm Les Miles later in the game. LSU again with three down, now four. Lockett is coming. The pass goes left side, is too high. Intended for Reuben Randall, who had a touchdown on a third and 14 in the first half. So three and out for LSU to open the third. Yeah, the sack caused it. Jefferson inaccurate again with this throw, and I think Randall getting his hand on it might have saved another interception, knocking that ball down. Derek Helton on for his first punt of the afternoon. Remember Josh Jasper, the position punter, towed the first one. Here's Helton. Marche Green is a deep man. Has to back up all the way to the 35, and then loses more ground back to the 30 as Danny McCray, number 44, was there. That is a 50-yard punt, and he lost three on the return. Ole Miss down by two with the ball. Steve Berline will be in Auburn for that one. 17-15 here at Ole Miss. And a first down 10 from the 35. Well, if you're Houston Nutt, you got to like where you're at. you got a hot quarterback and a game-breaking running back. And prior to the snap. Only flag on the play. Well, we're nearing the end of the 2009 season. Florida State of Florida. Gary and I will be there with Tracy next week. Alabama at Auburn. Clemson at South Carolina, Clemson at South Carolina, and of course Georgia's got a huge game at Georgia Tech. Some of the key games next week. I think both those last two games, I got my check marks there a little late, are huge for the SEC. If Alabama would get knocked off to keep that argument that a one-loss SEC team belongs in it, they need to win at least one of those two games against the ACC. Five-yard motion penalty against Ole Miss. Reed Neely, the left guard. Here's Jevin Sneed, play fake, rolls out. Nobody open, he'll run. He's around the corner and picks up. Boy, that was a tough seven yards. Jevin Carnell Sneed, Hatcher, number 37, was there. Look at how much more authority Jevin Sneed runs the ball than Jordan Jefferson. Jordan seems to be looking at him. I'll admit he's got a bad ankle, but Sneed right now is focused. He's taken all that criticism early in the year, and he really wants to get his team across one more win here at home. Jevin Snead from Stephenville, Texas. Started his career at the University of Texas and then transferred and sat out a year. Snead 
follows McCluster after the fake. And it'll be third down. On the tackle number seven, Patrick Peterson. Jevin Speeds, high school alma mater, Stephenville in the state playoffs. In Texas, in Texas. Yeah, and they, they lost in overtime last night. Uh oh. 26 23. Too. I have to hide that internet from you. Alito. <laughs> Alito beat them. You just, you know, it's all a matter of research. <laughs> Wait till he figures out how to use his iPhone. We're really in trouble. <laughs> that may take a few years. <laughs> Third and six. Oh, dear. Across the middle and incomplete intended for Markeith Summers. Three and out. Sneed was throwing this ball to the left shoulder, and you can see just an overrun. Sneed thought that Summers was going to stop a little bit sooner, and there was a little miscommunication there. I think he threw it where he wanted to, but the receiver and the quarterback were not on the same page. First punt of the night for Ole Miss. Tyler Campbell will punt it away to Chad Jones who among the highlights of his season has a 93-yard punt return for a touchdown. He is, oh, nice high kick. And Jones calls for and takes the fair catch at the 24-yard line. 37-yard punt. Of course, nothing on the return. Punt. So a pair of three and outs here at Vaught Hemingway on a cool... Late November, Saturday evening, 17-15, Tigers with the lead and the ball. Nothing says love like beef. Try Chick-fil-A's Peppermint Chocolate Chip Milkshake, available only for the holidays. Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero, Aflac, The Blind Side, and by Chick-fil-A. Well, The Blind Side is the story of Michael Orr, who's now with the Baltimore Ravens. There's a movie that premiered Friday night. A lot of buzz in this town. It's The Blind Side starring Sandra Bullock. Wow. I want him. I want him bad. <laughs> he, he didn't get him. <laughs> he came to Ole Miss. <laughs> Michael Orr, who is, uh, was a first-round pick of the Baltimore Ravens, and it's his story. It is a remarkable story about Michael Orr. How about the number of coaches who were in that thing? Yeah, they all, they're all. nobody's where they were, are they? No. <laughs> Les Miles said, hey, I tried to recruit him. Les Miles at the time was at Oklahoma State. Jefferson hit as he lets it go. It's caught, and no, it's dropped. LaFell. 
Now a little more about the, the story of the blind side. Here's Trace. Well, guys, this movie could have easily wound up being based at LSU. According to Leanne Tui, Michael Orr would have gone to LSU had Nick Saban stayed there. She said he was going there. He wanted to go there. He's, but Nick just up and left. As far as Les Miles, guys, he recruited him at Oklahoma State. Never visited the home, nor made the movie. <laughs> All right, Trace. Leanne Tui is... Uh, Michael's adoptive mother, she and Sean Tui, her husband, adopted him after finding him on the mean streets. Uh, homeless person. Here's Russell Shepard. Well, we just said during the commercial, what's Russell Shepard been up to? Yeah, and I, I think that's what Les Miles might have told Gary Croton. Let's get the ball to one come of our playmakers. They threw the ball to LaFell, who dropped it. you got to help your quarterback out on that play. And then they get the ball to Russell Shepard. Back-to-back plays. Lef LaFell has one catch in the game. That was a 14-yard gain by Shepard. Jefferson. Oh, boy, tough throw. Wow. Yeah. Woo. There was a lot of red in the middle. Yeah, well, Luan Scott, the defensive tackle, dropped on the play, and that's a tough one to pick up. For an NFL quarterback, you, you can't, this is a tough one on a quarterback. You really don't find those defensive tackles when you're reading it. You can see it right there. Scott, big number 96, was the one who really made that look crowded. And he might have tipped the he ball. He might have. Yeah. Second down, 10. Thomas Parsons, Keelan Williams in the backfield. Parsons lined up to the right side. He was an offensive guard until about three weeks ago. And Williams, as he makes the cut, slips and falls to set up a third and eight. Parsons with the block. Well, it, it's that time again in this football game. It's, it's hard to hide your quarterback. I can see it at the end of a half. But right now, you're going to have to dial up your quarterback and see if he can make a throw here. Make it third and nine. And by the way, he might need some protection if he's yeah. going to do it. Blitz from the corner. Jefferson, little pressure. Is it caught? Yes, it is, but it is short of the first down by a couple of yards. Yeah, winning play by the quarterback that time, Jordan Jefferson. Stayed in the pocket, rode up beautifully, threw the ball to the outside. Chris Missile catches it, but good enough coverage where it wasn't a first down. Here's the Mitchell catch. Brings up Ford, fourth and make it three. And Marche Green did a great job on that play. He competed the whole play. And he is now back to return the punt. Fourth and three. 17-15. 9.35 to go. Third quarter. Helton. Little pressure. Fair catch taken at the 19-yard line. A 36-yard punt for Helton of LSU. 9.27 to go. Third quarter. Patrick Peterson and his defensive teammates on the field when we come back. We are all going to wind up our uh, regular season college football coverage on Saturday, December 12th. Our crew will be in Philadelphia for the Army-Navy game presented by USAA. December 12th, Saturday afternoon, Army against Navy and we all look forward to being a part of that uh, annual celebration. After the punt, at, 19, at the 19, it's first down. Grandy still on the field. The freshman, Jesse Grandy, 5'7", 147 pounds. He has one of the touchdowns in the game. He comes in motion. They hand it to McCluster. And a quick opener out to the 35-yard line. Carnell Hatcher with the stop. That fast motion... Vern set it up for you. That quick motion just throws that defensive line and linebackers. It comes fast. And look at that. Look at the flow. Everybody's flowing and looking, looking for the sweep. And all of a sudden, there goes McCluster just gashing it inside. That's what happens. Speed coming fast in motion really freezes those secondary and linebackers. That was a gain of 16. He's over 100 now in the ballgame. 
And this time, not much. He loses a couple of yards. Well, McCluster says he considers himself a running back. They've used him all over the lot. Yeah, they have. They had him at wide receiver over here. Catches balls out there. Catches it inside with being handed at the tailback spot right there. And he also is in the Wild Rebel as the quarterback. Multiple player, and as I told you early, one of those guys, and remember, coaches at Florida told us Percy Harvin was able to do that for Florida. Doesn't need a lot of practice to run a lot of different positions. Here's McCluster on second down, 11. I was really taken with uh, with Kent Austin's description of, of McCluster. First of all, I think Gary said this in the first half. Smartest football player he's ever been yep. around. Greatest hands on the team. But the, the thing that makes him so valuable is his ability to take a play from the meeting room to the practice field and not need the reps. He, he is a threat, and it's really changed. You know, Houston Nutt told us, I didn't think he could take the punishment all year. He said, I would have liked to give him more touches early, but I don't know if we'd have him now had I done that. Third and seven. Blitz. Oh, boy. Yep. Harry Coleman, the strong side linebacker, coming, and it's incomplete. Right off the slot that time. The bunch formation is really tough for a quarterback to read. These blitzes come from the outside. It looks real confusing. Had to throw a hot, and he threw it just a little late to the outside. Great dialed-up defense that time by John Chavis from LSU. And another punting situation now for Ole Miss. Tyler Campbell. Trendon Hollowitz, nice and high. And a fair catch taken, called for by... Oh, that's a mistake. Holiday, and then he backed away from it. And it will be down at the six-yard line. When you say nice and high, a good punt returner will catch the ball. A 56-yard punt. He signals fair catch, and I don't know if he loses it or what. Well, that was only three, four yards away yep. from him. With that speed, you got to catch that ball. Cost his team Ladies 10 yards. 56-yard punt. And, of course, nothing on the return. 17-15 LSU. Take you back to uh, Trinden Holiday's fair catch signal and then decision to get away from the ball. Well, that ball landed on the 18 and a half yard line and ended up on the six yard line. So that's a 12 yard loss. And you can see LSU coaches say you got to catch that ball. And oh, the old Miss guys go, that's just the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> 7.34 to go third quarter. First down at the sixth. Worst field position of the game from which to start a drive today. LaFell, boy, he just about broke it for a huge gain. Marche Green, ankle tackle, a 13-yard gain. We come to you from Vaught-Hemingway. Oxford, Mississippi, 98th meeting between these two. LSU leads it. 17-15, Ole Miss with... Numerous opportunities in the first half had to settle for field goals. The difference in the score right now is a blocked field goal returned for a touchdown 53 yards by Patrick Peterson. Here's LaFell working the right side on this play and Marche Green. And they're going to say this one was incomplete. Well, Marche Green has been competitive and I think I could three or four throws that I can remember where he has challenged the receiver LaFell or Tolliver and did a great job. I'm going double move on him here pretty soon because he is fighting all over those throws. If I got a good double move, I think I can get him deep. Second down and 10. Jefferson hands it off to Williams. Takes it left. Almost broke that one. He gets out to the 24. Jonathan Cornell, number 51, the middle linebacker is there. Well, you could see the confidence that the LSU staff is gating in Jordan Jefferson as this game goes on. First and 10 from the six. Man-to-man -man coverage. 
throw a hook to the outside, challenged by Green to the outside. LaFell makes the catch. I'm telling you, I gotta see if he can cover my guy deep. Third and five. LaFell in the backfield. They got a 14 yard gain out of this formation in the first half. Here's LaFell near side. And they get more than a 14 yard gain on this one. 13. Well, I said more. It wasn't. You can't find another yard for me, Chuck Gardner. This is the exact play that LaFell came inside last time and ran a man route against man to man. This time it's zone. He comes in and goes to the outside. Watch this. Zone, go outside. The quarterback and the receiver read it. Beautiful. Gain of 13. Jefferson wings it. There's Marche Green again. This time on Chris Mitchell, who came into this ball game with only six receptions for the season. And he's caught three today. I've always wondered, you know, I, I have said all year that the best group of wide receivers in the SEC is the group at LSU. Now, Alabama's coming on strong. Right. I will admit that. But I've wondered why they haven't tried to create pressure points with those guys and then come to the running game later. Looks like they're trying that in this drive. Second and four here, Gary. Stephen Ridley is in as the uh, running back now. Here's Jefferson. Trahan coming on the blitz. And a pre-snap flag. Ah. Picked the flag up. Saw that act before. Time call. Second and four when we come back. LSU by two. Among the headlines in college football, Tiger Woods named honorary captain for the Stanford Cal game. That's this evening. Stanford having a terrific year. Bill Hancock, an old friend of ours, all of ours in college football, named first executive director of the BCS, and Mark Mangino under fire for comments about his players, the Kansas coach. And, of course, uh, University of Georgia in mourning, their beloved mascot, Ugga the Seventh, died unexpectedly this week at the age of four. Lived from 2009 to 2000, 2005 to 2009. Second and four. Jefferson, no, he sacked again. Marcus Tillman got him. One of the things you ask your quarterback to do on a fancy play, and we're going to look at the coverage first time right here. It's man-to-man -man coverage. If no one is open, is get you out of a play. You're trying to gimmick them for a big play. If it's not there, don't make it a terrible play. Throw the ball away. In that play, Jordan Jefferson didn't have much, and he made it worse. Third and 13, that's the third sack today. More significantly, that is the 30th given up by LSU this year. Jefferson on third and 13. Wow, wow, wow. Another, Another flag. Going to be a delay of game. For the snap, delay of game. Burn. I saw this week's headlines, but I, I got a guess about what next week's headlines are going to be. Uh, does it involve the Fighting Irish? I think so. They lost to UConn. We might be looking at a picture of Charlie Weiss in next week's headlines. In South Bend. Not a final yet, we we're just told. Well, LSU shot themselves in the foot terribly on that one. Penalties, sacks. A drive that started out pretty well with some good throws ended up with nothing. To clarify that uh, report, UConn leading Notre Dame in overtime 27 20. Fourth down. Green. Fair catch. At the 27, 42 yard punt. 
Now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athlete. Andy Hartman, the fullback for Ole Miss. GPA of 3.19. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Mississippi's General Scholarship Fund. It's been a quarter of punts, yeah. hasn't it? <laughs> well, you know, if you like to watch guys it's, kick the ball and soccer's right, not on your it, agenda. It, it has been a lot of mistakes. Sneed. Receiver open down the right side. That's Shea Hodge, number three, in front of Patrick Peterson. I tell you, Shea Hodge is a workman-like receiver. He works very hard. You read stuff on him. He's a high school quarterback, very disciplined. And when you're a quarterback and turn and throw the ball and out against Patrick Peterson, remember Peterson, his quote after the Alabama game, didn't catch any against me mm. about Julio Jones. Yes. First well, down and ten. Excuse me, Gary. Shea Hodge had a pretty good day against them. There's that uh, handoff to McCluster going right. Grandy getting extensive playing time, the uh, very fast freshman. So you got McCluster and Grandy with a lot of speed in that backfield. Well, the trademark of our Houston Nut team is physical football. And by moving Massey out to tackle and John Jerry into guard, he feels he's found a better, more physical right side of this football team. Massey is the massive freshman, 335. Here's McCluster up the middle. Boy, is he quick. Unbelievable. One shifty move and bingo. 15-yard gain. And as a offensive lineman, you know if you could just block your man for a half a second, that guy will find a crease. Now, I, to be honest, this was more than a crease. That was a gash. You got to give the offensive line credit for that, but he hits it fast. McCluster with 124 yards. Wildcat formation now. Bolden will take the snap. And he goes over right guard and right tackle, and he moves inside the 35. Perry Riley, number 56, with the tackle. You put all that strength inside, and you move the two tackles to the right side, and then you pull around Reed Neely. You actually put your whole offensive line to the right side here. Bolden was, uh, is from Baton Rouge. Three tackles, two tackles to the right again. Wow, and then he tried to pick it up and almost lost it. The Wildcat here is putting the tight end to the short side and lining two tackles to the strong side. But you got to get the football first. Snap was a little right. Bolden doesn't handle it. Just to complete the thought on Bolden, he was... Uh, Recruited by LSU, but they wanted him to play in the defensive backfield. And he said, no thanks, I'm going to keep running the football. And Came to Ole Miss. Time call by Ole Miss, 1.43 to go, third quarter. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Well, you got speed coming around, and you got speed getting the football. And you got a powerful offensive line that's growing. That's the key to success. Good at ball handling. McCluster with great vision and the way he's running the ball. I mean, he's, you know, in the SEC, he's putting hundreds, hundreds, hundreds I got in these guys. Pretty impressive. And on the ground, Ole Miss is now outrushed LSU 156 to 45. It's third down here. Need watch out from the rush. He goes deep left side for Hodge and leads him by two yards too much. Well, how about that? John Chavis dialed up the blitz. It was third and 12, and he brought seven man to man to the outside. Hawkins pushes wide. Ball is thrown to the right receiver, but just two yards too long. And John Chavis said, I'm going for it. And so fourth down, this time it's Chad Jones back to return yeah. the hunt, the punt. And Tyler Campbell lets it go. Jones does as well. How about that? How about 
that. Lionel Bro dives into the end zone, flips it back, it's down at the one. How do you do? Now remember, it's the plane of the line. Does it bust the plane? I don't that believe so. That judge is right there. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I think that ball was on the line. You and I have got to quit disagreeing. I know. It's fun, though. <laughs> that should be reviewed. It doesn't matter. In the NFL, it would. LSU's going to quick snap it. That was a good play by LSU to beat the replay. Number 10. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim Brando. Oh, the travails of Charlie Weiss in the second overtime. Andre Dixon of Connecticut. Four yards in. Touchdown. UConn wins. Now Notre Dame needs to win at Stanford next week, fellas, to possibly get into the Gator Bowl on New Year's Day, which, by the way, will be right here on CBS. Back to you. Indeed. Thank you, Tim. Second down. Jefferson and Williams in the backfield. Blitz. Jefferson way back. Goes deep for Tolliver. Incomplete. Third and nine. He had, had no choice. Jordan Jefferson did a nice job here. He had a guy coming. He had to just throw it to a spot and hope. Turned loose. A man turned loose on the play. He just had to get rid of it. Marcus Tillman, who has a sack in the ballgame, number 92. Third and nine. Blitz coming. Kendrick Lewis almost picked off. A flag is thrown. Boy, Tyrone Nix brought a ball also. Seven men coming on the blitz. Watch them all come. Kendrick Lewis comes. Both safeties come. Pass interference. Defense 24. Ball in place from the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Cash is Vaughn. Call for the interference. Tolliver on the slant. Perfect call against the blitz. One hand on his hip, one hand coming around. I think it's a good call. And so a first down between the 11 and 12. Let's look again for Ole Miss. They are coming. Keelan Williams goes left. And another flag. Johnny Brown with a tackle. Tackle number 20, Johnny Brown. Holding. Tigers. Holding. Offense number 18. Penalty's half the distance to the goal. Repeat first out. Well, I'll tell you that the official who throws his flag at Cassius Vaughn Hits the target. Watch this. Oh, wow. Here comes the flag. Cassius Vaughn catches it. Oh, right below the waist. He had to take a playoff. And he's now a tenor. <laughs> First and 15 at the six. Jefferson. Oh, boy. Dixon. Tried to do the tightrope act, and he's out of bounds with a loss of two at the four. Kendrick Lewis, number one, with when the you, stop. When you have an assignment, you do your assignment. Kendrick Lewis has Dixon. Watch him come up. Man-to-man -man coverage and get the hit. And Dixon... Boy, did he go out at the four there? I didn't think so. Close again. Yeah. That is the end of the third quarter play. Now they'll head to the south end of the stadium now. That's the end of the third quarter with the score 17-15.
We'll return to Vaughn Hemingway Stadium right after this word from your local station. This afternoon, Saron Black started his 51st consecutive game for the LSU Tigers. Next week, barring an injury, he'll equal the mark set by his former teammate Andrew Whitworth. And between the two of them, 104 consecutive starts at left tackle. Motion in the line. Uh, now, flag is down. Who got called? Jarrell Poe came across the line. Play flag on the play. By the way, during that timeout. Dead ball, offside, 57 defense. Five yard penalty, still second down. For the LSU fans, we did peek and go look at it during the, the timeout, and Dixon did step out at the four. Right. The ball is now at the nine. Second and 16. Excuse me, second and 11. Second and 11. Second down 12. I'll correct the public address announcer. Out of the spread, Jefferson. Deep down the left side for LaFell. Got a step, held up, bobbles it incomplete. Incidental contact. Boy, they have fired away at Marche Green this afternoon. And at that time, they went deep on him, and Jefferson had him. Would have helped if LaFell could have made a big catch here. Little contact right on the play. Green, now remember there's no face guard, but there also is no interference either. That could have been called because he bumped LaFell on that play. Third and 12. Jefferson with a lot of time now. I mean, a bunch. Now pressure. Flags are down, and this one is going to be incomplete. Two flags are down. No, it's only one. Somebody threw something from the stands. From the stands. I thought it was a flag. Well, Tolliver was wide open deep. The only thing is it'll take two throws to get it that deep. Ineligible downfield is the call. It will be declined, I'm sure. Tolliver ends up going real deep down the field, but actually too deep for Jefferson to even throw it that far. Only a three-man rush from Ellis, excuse me, from Ole Miss that time, and not even Jordan Jefferson could throw it that far. And so fourth down and 12. Derek Hilton on to punt. Marche Green. Awaits the punt at the 50. This one is low. Green comes up, makes the catch at the 44-yard line. 14-31 to go in the ballgame. LSU by two. And now, it's time for our Geico Game Recap. It was a game of missed opportunities for Ole Miss in the first quarter. Here was Vaughn with an interception. That was wiped out. The touchdown by a block in the back. Here was Shea Hodge. He was uh, ruled out of bounds. A blocked field goal by Al Woods. Picked up by Patrick Peterson. A 53-yard touchdown for the Tigers of LSU. And uh, Joshua Sheen with three field goals from 45 25 and 33 in the first half. And then the, the sweep for the touchdown, Jesse Grandy, the freshman. And right now it's 17-15 as we're early in the fourth quarter. We want to take a moment to send our condolences to Chris Spielman and his four children. Chris lost his wife, Stephanie, earlier late this week uh, after a 12-year battle with cancer. 42 years of age, and I know Chris was a teammate of yours. Well, not, not a teammate, but he played for the Lions and, and a good friend, Vern, and... and you know, college football meant so much to him, and, and we all just admired the way he played and his great family, and all of the college football world, world uh, uh, we just send all our thoughts and condolences to Chris. A, a great, great guy in college football. And Stephanie, with a valiant 12-year fight against cancer, which she lost 
late this week. Left side, catch is made at the 33-yard line. Shea Hodge in front of Chris Hawkins. Well, Shea Hodge, again, such a technician. You can tell the confidence that Jevin Sneed has when he throws the ball. They run the out. It's one of those plays against man-to-man -man bump where you lock the play on. When you have a guy that's a technician, you lock the out on, and you just throw it against bump coverage. Here's Grandy in motion again. They give it to McCluster again. That's about the fourth time they've run that play with Grandy coming around. And again, all you got to do is get somebody leaning one way or another, and McCluster will find that crease. Well, we talked to Houston Nutt yesterday and said, do you wish that you had had McCluster at running back all season long? And he kind of looked at us for a moment and said, I'd like a do-over. Yeah, but he, but again, as we talked about early, he's got a healthy McCluster Right. Now. A pass. He is, and he's got a man wide open. It's Hodge. Touchdown Ole Miss. Who said he couldn't pass? Well, better from this formation. He missed all five he tried a year ago. He completes this one for 27 yards and a go-ahead score. Wow. What a call. Didn't you just know that Houston Nutt had something in well, the in he, the he always does in the saddlebag. He just he feels the game really well. He really does. You have to give him credit. But he's got a horse there now. Sheen. Wow. Well, they've been doing so much with the cluster that you knew this LSU defense was ready to stop them and the safeties in the corner and everybody was up on that play. Carnell Hatcher came up. He's the guy that should have stayed back, I believe, on it. We saw Peterson, but number 37, the safety, should have been there. And McCluster, who was 0 for 5, is now 1 for 6. Vaught Hemingway in Oxford on the campus of Ole Miss rocking right now after that halfback pass. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Direct TV. 27-yard pass, McCluster to Shea Hodge, the go-ahead touchdown. Andrew Ritter will kick off. Holiday and Brooks are the two deep men. Holiday from the eight. Slips a tackle all the way out near the 35. Ritter makes the touchdown saving tackle. Well, let's show you where Shea Hodge started. Right here, and it's either Peterson and man-to-man -man coverage back there, or Hatcher, the safety. That's the culprit on the play. Looks like a run. If it's man-to-man -man coverage, it should have been Peterson. If it's a zone, it should have been the safety. It's either number seven or number 37, one of the two. A beautifully designed and executed play. Well, that is just a classic example of setting up that play. Absolutely. They ran out of that formation five or six times. Now Brandon LaFell back on the field. Looks like a blitz might be coming from Ole Miss. They are bringing six. Peterson has been sacked four times, three times. And if he got back to the line of scrimmage, that will not count as number four. Tillman got there. Well... Both teams trailing Alabama. Both lost to Alabama. That was one of two LSU losses. Ole Miss has lost three for the season. And uh, as Gary mentioned, they're playing for pride, but also positioning themselves for a January 1st bowl game. 
And after LSU took that swoon last year, it's going to be tough to do it two years in a row here, losing late in the year. They feel they're a quality football team. Keelan Williams, Trahan got him. That's a fumble. Who's got it? It's recovered by LSU. Well, Jonathan Cornell had a touchdown, and he booted it. Literally booted it. Fifth, watch 51, Jonathan Cornell. Comes inside the ball, stripped by Trahan, and then Cornell boots it out of bounds. Vaughn Ingram diving for it. Watch Cornell. Patrick Peterson picked it up for a touchdown. Cornell bobbles it, boots it, and it goes right out of bounds. Third and 21. Can't blame a guy for trying to scoop and score. No. You really can't. Boy, they're coming with the blitz. It looks like three-man line. No, it isn't. Nope, back out. On third and 21. Jefferson, flag, this could be holding, of course. And the pass is complete to the 29. It might be declined. Well, let's see. Interesting decision now for Houston Nutt. Looks Accept it. Ten-yard penalty, third down. And I, I think he'll take the he'll decline match. it. Okay. I think, you think? I think he'll decline it. Personal foul, face mask, 78 offense. The penalty's declined. Fourth down. As you look at Keelan Williams, remember they're already without Scott. Yes, Trahan came on the back of his ankle on the play. And now Keelan Williams is on the bench struggling with an ankle injury. Well, the backup to him is Stephen Murphy. Uh, Stephen Ridley, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Richard Murphy, who hasn't seen action in uh, about a month. And so Helton is on to punt. By the way, there are two 38s punting for LSU. Helton and a fellow named Drew Allman. This is Helton's punt. Out of bounds. 37-yard punt, nothing on the return. Ole Miss with the lead and the ball. Keelan Williams in some pain on the sidelines. Let's get more from uh, Tracy Wilson. That's right, guys. Right now he's on the training table. It's that left ankle. He came off in a lot of pain at first. They asked him to stand up. He looked up at the trainers. He said, I can't do it. Finally, they got him up walking. He said, I can't put any weight on it. They're just starting to look at it right now. I'll bring any more information I get to you as soon as possible. All right, Trace. Thank you. And, of course, uh, Charles Scott, broken collarbone. Two weeks ago, and he is uh, with the team here, but obviously not in uniform. Up the middle, it's Bolden, number 34. Well, here's the tough part of your call and plays now for Ole Miss. You got a six-point lead. You don't want to get too conservative. I mean, you know, you, you got to score another time in this football game to really feel good about the score. Second and five. Just handing the ball up the middle. I don't think LSU feels they can get first downs that way. Well, here's McCluster around the right side. Hit and uh, leans forward to the 43-yard line. How about the day that Dexter McCluster is having? Well, Again. started out early with his 57-yard run. He showed his speed. He also showed his ability to catch the football and make something out of nothing. Runs the ball inside, and with all that difference, then it said, I'll set up and throw the pass. What a weapon. The cluster is senior out of Far uh, Largo, uh, Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. And uh, the go-ahead touchdown, his pass to Shea Hodge. Option, the cluster. First down, Ole Miss. 
wonderfully executed play by Ole Miss here. You fake inside, and then Jevin Sneed's job is to get hit. Watch him get hit. Pitches the ball and gets hit. He eliminates Chad Jones and gets a first down on the play. Clock at 10.34. And Ole Miss leading by five. McCluster, John Jerry's out there leading the way. This time, uh, McCluster cannot avoid the gang tackle of LSU. Jacob Cotrera, number 54. On the tackle for LSU. Well, he was uh, one of those introduced at the pregame ceremony. Comes out, says hello to his mom and his dad and his three-year-old daughter. A little kiss for dad. He told us yesterday the whole mob is coming. He's got uh, the family, mom and dad, and his two sisters, a couple of uncles, and they're putting on a show in this final game at Vaught Hemingway. And the show continues. Carnell Hatcher makes the tackle. I know it's uh, watching him. You can see what the great backs can do is they attack one side of the formation and end up hitting it to the other side of the formation. That's why those tailbacks line up so deep so they can get ahead of steam and then the good ones can go from, you know, the tackle spot on the right side and break it all the way back to the tackle spot on the other side. Third and five. Sneed has it. No, it's McCluster. I beg your pardon. And a flag is down. For the snap, false start. 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Bradley Sowell, the left tackle. He's the guy that uh, had to take the place of Michael Orr on the blind side. Had some real trouble in, in the early going, but uh, seemed to be playing a little bit better now. The ball is now at midfield. Third down Ole Miss only averaging penalty throw. yards 39 yards a game coming into this uh, game, and they're at uh, eighth penalty for Let's over 50, near 60 yards. And that makes it third and 10 officially. Blitz coming, Sneed lets it go, has a man open, and Shea Hodge. Wow, what a weapon he's been today. First down at the 37. Well, Peterson didn't dare bite on this one because it's the same look that he got beat for almost a touchdown before, and Jevin Sneed is doing it all. With that running attack, he's so much more comfortable than he started out this year. Now look at the quarterback comparison. Sneed, 13 of 19, no touchdowns, but the most significant thing is no interceptions. Hartman, the fullback. They come right. It's Bolden. Tackle made by Peterson. Rolling on the ground. And the clock now under eight minutes. Now I know, you know, a field goal makes it an eight-point game, but that still means it's a one-possession game. That's what you're playing with as you're calling plays here for Ole Miss. You'd love, obviously, to have the touchdown because it makes it a two-possession game. Second down. Grandy goes left. Oh, boy, Chad Jones wrapped him up. Pat Patterson, number 11, missed his block on Jones. Jones very aggressive on the play. Right there, watch him get inside Patterson. Wonderful job by Jones to get inside. Patterson doesn't get the block. It had he got the block, it would have been one-on-one. -on -one. one guy back there, Chris Hawkins, against a really gifted player. Third and eight. Sneed, wide open is Hodge. Hodge to the 20. It's another first down. S 
Can you tell the confidence he has in yeah. Shea Hodge? This is kind of a hide route. He hides right behind his guys and just breaks out quickly. Seventh catch by Hodge. Just a speed route to the outside. Really tough to handle those stacks when you're playing man coverage. And Sneed feels so confident throwing the ball to Hodge. That is a gain of 14. Hodge with seven catches for 118 yards. Now he'll hammer him with Bolden up the middle. Inside the 15. Carnell Hatcher with the tackle. Bolden comes off with an injury. Well, the team of Kent Austin and Houston Nutt have this offense moving right now, don't they? Cool. They know they've got a wild card in Dexter McCluster and a hot quarterback. Can't have it better than that. 11th play of this drive. Second down, four. Grandy in motion. Same formation. McCluster inside the 10, down to the 8. Should be first and goal if everything stands. Remember that third down play when I said Hodge hid? Three people go with number 22. Watch three people go with number 22, and Hodge sneaks out. McCluster making a play because he's so valuable as a decoy. You know, I was watching tape of McCluster running the ball. Sometimes I think he just runs right at gray pants. He doesn't even, <laughs> he just looks for the gray and runs right? right at the gray pants, and then he makes the cut from there. Whoa! They had brought the chains out to measure for the first down. I did not hear against whom this was called. Personal foul against the defense. LSU needs a defensive stand. As important as that Mississippi State game, they need one right here. First and goal. Shea Hodge goes wide left. Cast the inside again. This is Bolden, number 34. Number 34, Brandon Bolden with the football. This has been some impressive possession. Now, Poe comes in, the defensive lineman. He's been in here. It's kind of the Mount Cody role. There's Ken yes, Austin, does. the coordinator. So they've got the defensive tackle, Poe, number 57. He will lead the way on this handoff, if it is a handoff. 12 plays on the drive, 10 of them runs. Play fake. Sneed. Oh, I think he threw it away. He did. Yeah. Good defense. Assignment, good defense. Everybody was ready. As much as you thought, and I thought, that Ole Miss was going to run this ball, everybody stayed with their assignments and nowhere to throw the football. Third and goal. Now we've... Uh, Tried to determine against whom that penalty was called. We've been told now from the sidelines that it was on Chris Hawkins, number 29. Right side, Bolden, no. Fourth down, they'll have to try the field goal. And I wonder if LSU should call a timeout here because it's going to be a field goal. It's going to cost them a full 40 seconds here. They're going to keep it. 93, Joshua Sheen, the tip the field goal. Joshua Sheen had one block today. It was returned 53 yards by Patrick Peterson for an LSU touchdown. He's three of four. Got it. Twenty-three yard field goal. Eight point margin.
Next Saturday, our gang will be down in Gainesville for Florida State at Florida. Florida State won, come from behind, victory over Maryland, bowl eligible yet again. And Tim Tebow's last game in the swamp. All begins with DIAA Craft College football today, next Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Florida, Florida State. Reminder again, we'll have Alabama at Auburn on Friday. For you. Eight-point game, right, Vern? Yep. It'd I know kick, where you're going. They'd have kicked that extra point. It'd be a nine-point game. It'd be a two-possession game. 3.42 to go. It's, it's now four down for yep. a first down. Two timeouts. Both teams, by the way, have two timeouts remaining. Ole Miss has not won here against LSU in 11 years. Right side, Holiday, all the way out to the 34-yard line. And Ritter, the kicker, makes the tackle. Well, how about the uh, possession chart for LSU in the second half? That's not a good second half. Five times they've had the ball. You've seen what they've done with it. It's been penalties. It's been sacks. It's been good defense. Right. Okay. But now it's going to be tougher. Because right now, as... Jeff, Jordan Jefferson comes on the field. He knows he's got four chances to make a first down instead of three. Jefferson at quarterback. Stephen Ridley is the running back. We call the Keelan Williams on the bench with an ankle injury. Ridley didn't play much until the last three games. Here's Jefferson back. Rushes on. Catch is made at the 43-yard line. Brandon LaFell. <laughs> Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Nice throw right there. Timing, slant to one of your best players. On second down, Jefferson across the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Tolliver. I was watching the pass rush. Was this ball behind? Slightly, but good defense at yeah. the same time. Marche Green. Yeah, the converted, well, it was almost two years ago now. Marche Green, when Houston Nutt got here, he said, we don't have any corners. Marche, you got to go defense. Saron Black at fullback. And the push at the right side. Did Shepard take that play at quarterback? I think he did. Yes, he did. And it's enough to move the chain. Shepard comes in with the quarterback seat. Remember, Jefferson has that bad angle. You're going to get a little more push from Shepard on that play because of his ability just to push off on the ankle and the foot. First and 10. 25-17, 2.52 to go. Jefferson back in. He'll take this out of the shotgun. Blitz, Ole Miss, Jefferson across the middle, caught. Looks like a nine-yard gain at the 47-yard line. Terrence Tolliver with the catch. Well, you can see that Gary Croton, the coordinator from LSU, is expecting the blitz, and he's getting it. He's running quick slants. I think Tyrone Nix would be better off backing off and playing some coverage right now. Second and two. 25-17, 2.17 to go. Jefferson left side overthrown. Good coverage by Green on Tolliver. Very aggressive corner. Marche Green is. Inside technique. Jams. As the ball was thrown, you see Tolliver's going, wait a second, wasn't that ball in the air? Third and two. You have to pick up the first down. Still plenty of time remaining. And again, Ridley is the running back. They'll go from the spread. Ole Miss with four down. Here's the option play. Left side, Ridley gets a block and a lot more. Out of bounds at the 36. Forced there by 
Jonathan Cornell, the middle linebacker, number 51. Well, Richard Dixon was sitting in the fullback spot, even though he's a tight end, and gets the arc block. Nice job by Jefferson to get it to the outside, and Dixon does a wonderful job getting on his man and creating that first down space. Under two to go. Two timeouts remaining for both teams. This time he rolls right, fires it, tipped and incomplete. Intended for Ruben Randall. Guess who was defending? Yeah, it seems like they throw at his guy every time. Yeah. Does. <laughs> what do they know that we don't? I know. And you know, had that ball been accurately thrown, I think Green would have got it. Sometimes, you know, as a quarterback, you see the defender and you just let it go high almost instinctively. Nine straight wins for the Tigers on trips to this state. And again, Ole Miss has not won in this series here in 11 years. Second down and 10. Back-to-back -back plays, they play coverage. Blitz from the corner. Oh, he's got it to the 25-yard line. That might be enough to move the chain again. Ridley, tackled by Alan Walker. I'll tell you, it, this is one of the things that people don't understand. When you come on the field with four downs to pick up first downs, that's a 33% greater chance of picking up the first down. Remember the opportunity they didn't get against Alabama in this situation. First down 10, 126 to go. Jefferson Blitz, they got him as he let it go. Kendrick Lewis, number one. Everybody in the park knew it was a blitz. Everybody in the park. You've got to get rid of it, quarterback. All 11 people, no safety. you got to throw it quickly. Ridley tried to move over to his left way too late. Second and ten. Jefferson deep in the right corner, man is open. It's caught, touchdown. Ruben Randall, number two, his second grab for a TD in the ball game. And what did they do? They went deep on Green. He's been so aggressive, he squatted and he ran right by him. You just knew they were gonna eventually get Green. Green just squats. He never takes a step back runs right by him that's why he was in on all those plays because he was gambling you gotta go by him now the try for two lafell and tolliver both near side ridley in the backfield Alongside Jefferson. This for the tie. Into the left corner. Battle. Flag is thrown. It was Tolliver and Cassius Vaughn. Who got called? Fade pass to the outside. Tolliver 6-5. You can see it. Pass interference. Defense number 24. At the distance to the goal, repeat the try. The tough part now for the Ole Miss defense, it brings the quarterback draw or option into the into the call right now. Boy, just thinking back to, you know, if they had Scott, if they had Williams, would they just run the ball here? They have Ridley, and we'll see. Again for the tie. They are coming. Old Miss is bringing them all. That's LaFell in motion. Jefferson with pressure. Incomplete. Side. 
Same combo. Yep. And Tolliver does not come down with it. Even, even if he had, his foot would have been out of bounds. You know, I, I think not having his two backs there affected that call. That's not a high percentage pass from the one-yard line. Cassius Vaughn, who had just been called for interference, defending Terrence Tolliver, tried the same play essentially twice. It's 25-23. And now we'll watch that onside kick. First time it was interference. Second time, pressure. And even if he had caught it, he would have been out of bounds. So the onside kick forthcoming with 1.17 to go. Josh Jasper will kick it. College rules, you have to have four players to the other side of the kicker. LaFell in perfect stride. That ball never bounced up high. LaFell took it like a grounder. Watch it. Skip, 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 and LaFell grabs it. Never had to stop at all. Perfect stride. I, I think Dexter McCluster let it go. Is that number 22? Yes. yes. McCluster let it go to the second level, and he actually let it go for LaFell. They're on 22. Well, here we go. 116 remaining. Two timeouts, both teams. McCluster, Houston Nutt doesn't want to hear about it right now. First down and 10. Field goal wins it for LSU. Huh. What a game. Blitz. Jefferson pulls up, lets it go for LaFell. And Tolliver both on the near side. It was kind of in between them. May have been for Tolliver. Good job by Jordan Jefferson to get rid of the ball, though. Everyone's coming. This is where the shotgun really helps. Because you're away from the line of scrimmage and you have time to get rid of the football. Tyrone Nix has uh, called the blitz about six times right. in a row. Well, you know, as good a field goal kicker as LSU has, they got to stop him almost right here. Yep. What about 25 yards? Here comes the blitz again. Jefferson lets it go. LaFell out of a tackle. Still surging to the 30-yard line. The wide receiver screen. When you're expecting the blitz, a way to defeat the blitz is get rid of it on the wide receiver screen. LaFell runs away from a tackle. Great play. They all are already within a 50-yard field goal range. Josh Jasper looks like he's shadow boxing. His season long is 52 yards. They're right there. Jefferson pumps once. Uh-oh, has to let it go. Second down and 10. <laughs> right there, George Jefferson. Oh, my, if I take a sack right here. Right. <laughs> does a great job. Coverage this time. Five-man rush. Nowhere to go. And a strong-armed quarterback gets it out there to live for another day. Don't need a lot of yards here. Have two timeouts also. Right. Three down for Ole Miss. They threaten the blitz. They're bringing five. Jefferson rolling right. Big Chase got him at the 41. Emmanuel Stevens, number 95. 
Saran Black did a good job here. His offensive tackle, watch, left side, does a nice job. He pushes wide. If Jefferson would have gone up in the pocket instead of retreating to the right, it would have been good pass protection. He retreats to the right and runs himself into a sack. Wow. And the unexpectedly most placid coach on the sideline is Houston Nutt. Well, he's got a lot of thinking to do. Yes, he, he does. He has to show calmness, remember? He said, I got to think. What can uh, what Ken Austin say? He's a right side brain right. guy? Right, yes, he did. <laughs> Well, Ruben Randall caught his second touchdown pass of the day. The try for two, not good. Here's the onside kick, Gary. McCluster moves out of the way, and it goes right to LaFell. And then there was a 26-yard pass to Brandon LaFell. Wide receiver screen, the zip screen, and gets it all the way out there. Need, Vern, I think they need about nine yards for a 50-yard field goal. Remember, they've already made a 50-yard field goal going the same direction. Well, they just had that, and they lost That's nine right. yards That's right. on the last play. I, I have to say, I, I thought they'd run something inside because they were in field goal range already. Third and 19 with 32 seconds to go. LSU can stop the clock one more time. They might be coming again, Ole Miss. No, they're not. Little quick screen out to the left. Ridley in trouble. Fourth down. Patrick Trahan, number seven, and they lost seven more. Nice job by Trahan that time doing his assignment. He had Ridley. He never let him get outside. That was a screen pass called all the way, and Trahan, the senior, does a great job. Final timeout used by Les Miles and the Tigers. They're looking at fourth and 26. And the Rebels of Ole Miss think they might have this one. Now I really miss the NFL. Yeah, you're right. I think LSU has two options here. They could just throw the Hail Mary with their tall receivers and try right. to catch it. Remember, they need a first down. It is fourth down and long. Or they could call the Boise State lateral play. Right. Well, they have to get to the 22-yard line in order to have one more play. Nine seconds remaining in the ballgame. You realize Stanford and Cal playing today. You have to be careful if you're LSU. You take too long in a lateral play. Even if you make it, there might not be any time left to kick the field goal. Fourth down and 26. Ole Miss has five up front, six back. Jefferson is nailed as he lets it go. It's caught! Tolliver with one second left. Get your field goal team on. You have to get your field goal team on. Oh my gosh! You don't have time to ground the ball. Terrence Tolliver and here. What are they doing? You don't have time to ground the ball. What are you they doing? Play. Game over. Why do you not have your field goal team Should out there? Should have run his field goal team out there. My I think, gosh. I think they waited too long on third down to call a timeout also. Holy cow! Yeah. 
One second left, you only get one play. Whether it's a grounding ball or a field goal, that's all you get. Tracy's with Les Miles. Coach, what happened on that last play? How come you didn't try for the field goal? We couldn't get it lined up fast enough. You know, we knew we were going to run out of time. That, that, that was the issue. We probably had to call. We're trying to get the field goal team on. They were down there under. We could not have spiked it, certainly. How disappointing is this loss? Well, with every opportunity to win the back end of the game, you'd like to finish with a victory. Thanks a lot. See ya. I'm stunned. Well, you know, as big a mistake was made on third down as on fourth down. Yeah, I think so, too. Because time long, went by, yes. Too long to call timeout on the play. It forced him into no strategy on fourth down. Either score or the game was over. Well, we are taking a few... Automotive in West Point is still going strong. We've got a great selection of 2009 GMC trucks, cars, and SUVs. And with new 2010 models coming in daily, the deals have never been better. Huge deals, up to $10,000 off sticker price on select. So, I mean, our defense, I was so upset because we didn't punch the ball in down here to ice it. We don't get the onside kick. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. How about down the stretch on that final?